Anything he puts his hands on turns to gold. Hey everyone, Nick here from Found and Explained. Welcome to our new weekly series called Grounded, where we'll be looking at some airline juggernauts and boutique airlines that no longer fly today. We will explore why they existed, what they were like to fly, and what on earth happened to them. So fold up your tray table, buckle your seatbelt, and let's take off to a world of Grounded Airlines. In the late 1980s, everyone wanted to own an airline. North America saw an explosion of carriers catering to all demographics and niches. And there was no more lucrative market than the northeastern shuttle routes of New York to Boston and to Washington. Now you can fly to New York, Washington or Boston. In this game was Pan Am Shuttle and Eastern Airlines Shuttle. Shuttle services that were the most profitable parts of their respective mainline carriers. In the Pan Am seat, you're guaranteed to get Pan Am service. In the Eastern seat, you're guaranteed to get Eastern service. And that's a guarantee you won't soon forget. A seat. The Eastern Air Shuttle, a guaranteed seat without a reservation. But bigger problems brewed at Eastern with the rise of low-cost carriers like People Express Airlines, who cut deeply into its profits. The airline has built its service around the country by excluding the price of meals, ticket counters, and luggage handling from the price of the ticket. Various pivots failed to make enough profit, and facing massive wage cuts, pilots of Eastern went on strike. The airline was forced to sell off routes and subsidiary carriers like its Eastern Airlines shuttle. Enter our titular character, Donald Trump, who back in the late 80s was riding on the coattails of a successful New York real estate empire. Meeting then-president of Eastern Airlines, Frank Lorenzo, at a party, he managed to band together a bank deal to buy the shuttle service for himself for a cool price of $365 million, far more than the cost of a startup of his own airline but would automatically come with a share of the market that Eastern Airlines Shuttle dominated with Pan Am. Part of this deal was to include the entire fleet of 17 Eastern Airlines Boeing 727s, landing facilities and gates at each of the three cities that the carrier flew to, and the right to put his Trump brand on the aircraft and uniforms. Speaking of the staff, over 1,000 Eastern employees were transferred to the new venture and saved their jobs. For us, it's, a, uh, it's kind of a dream come true. On the first day of business, the Donald got to work adding his own unique Trump spin to the carrier. I purchased it because really this is a diamond and I want to keep it that way. Essentially, these shuttle airlines operated as a no-frills, low-cost operation to keep out low-cost carriers and to rival against ground-based transport like buses and trains. Trump had a different idea altogether and converted the airline from a shuttle service into a luxury carrier. And what do we mean by luxury? Trump spent over $1 million on each plane to revamp them into his new Trump livery and had the interiors redecorated with maple wood veneer, chrome seat belts, and gold-colored lavatories with marble benches, much like the apartment that Trump lived in at the time. Keep in mind, these aircraft were only worth around 4 million US dollars each. And to be fair, the upgrades were not just vain surface level details but also included free meals for all passengers, such as Trump steaks, free champagne, beer and wine. The new Trump shuttle. Caviar and champagne, you're right. And technology like self-checking kiosks, in-flight telephones, and rentable laptop computers. Needless to say that these features quickly allowed Trump to regain market share against rival Pan Am 
and control 40% of the northeastern air shuttle market. Trump had seemingly done the impossible and had conquered the airline business much where others had faltered. With competition heating up between Pan Am Shuttle and Trump Shuttle, both sides deployed the big guns in the form of million dollar advertising campaigns. Pan Am launched a contest called the Corporate Jet Game, which included a chance for a grand prize winner to end up with an all expense paid weekend in Bermuda via a charter jet for the winner and 25 friends. Trump rebuttaled this deal offering every passenger on board a $25 gift card for any restaurant that took with American Express. But then the real estate magnate went a little too far and criticized the safety record of Pan Am, a big no-no in the competitive airline game. Everyone says, don't mention safety, don't talk about safety, never bring it up. I bring it up because to me it's very important. Safety is the whole ball game. Henry Hartevelt, the company marketing director at the time, remembered, we had no proof to back it up and there's an unwritten rule in the airline business that you don't attack someone else's safety record. And as luck would have it, this would come to bite him when his own plane suffered a nose gear failure in August of 1989 arriving at Boston. Speaking to the media after the event, Trump said, It was the most beautiful landing you have ever seen. It went all the way down the runway. By the time it landed at the end, the front just touched very softly. Everybody got off. Nobody was injured. They were shaken up, but they were fine. This PR disaster revealed that the airline was hemorrhaging money and that in 18 months, Trump shuttle had spent over half of the original investment. 128 million US dollars. You see, there were several flaws with this airline. It focused on an opulence rather than convenience, focusing on the image of a successful rich man airline rather than what actual CEOs and business leaders wanted. Sure, passengers could dine on the very best whilst in flight, but it was only a 45 minute flight. There was not enough time to even pop the bottle when the seatbelt sign turned on. And all those extra features like marble in the bathrooms caused the carrier to churn and burn through fuel. Fuel that was now at a premium thanks to the Gulf War and a recession that cut corporate travel budgets in half. By the 1990s, over 100 employees had been let go and many of the perks had vanished from the airline, such as free coffee lounges. Limping for another year, it was clear that a luxury shuttle model had not worked and the Trump was forced out of the business. The 245 million in loans and the 135 million in personal guarantees by Trump were washed away and he only took a loss of 35 million. US Airways would step in and take control of the airline and would eventually buy it in 1997 for the original $245 million price. The new owners scrapped the golden toilets and dropped the name. Speaking back on the airline a few years later, Trump said that he came off rather well. I ran an airline for a couple of years and made a couple of bucks. The airline business is a tough business, but I did great with it. Ironically, in the early 90s, the Washington Post ran a survey about the shuttle market of New York, Boston, Washington, asking business travelers to name the first airline shuttle that comes to mind. Their answer? Eastern. Next week on Grounded by Found and Explained. Hooters girls on every flight. We will be looking at Hooters Air, a restaurant airline in the sky designed all around catering to male golfers, among other things. Let me know in the comments today what you think of this series and if you have any ideas of what you would like to see next. And if you enjoyed it, click that subscribe button to never miss an episode. It's free and you can cancel at any time. Thanks again for watching.